Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a wonderful guest on our show today. This is Dr. Sam, and he is an expert in the field of leadership and success. And he's here to tell us a lot of great information, and he's going to give us his input about leadership and being a great leader in this world that we live in today. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to um DMA World. DMA World is a marketing consultant group and they are focused on helping the little people. They are sick of seeing the big, big, big marketing companies really scamming those little businesses. And his goal is to help those little businesses grow into large businesses without having to spend all the large expenses that some of these marketing groups can really throw on to um, people who are limited and have limited budgets. So DMA World Dot com is the place to go to when you want good marketing consultant that gets you where you need to go and doesn't cost you a fortune. So Dr. Sam, I'm very excited to have you on the show today. Um, you know, tell us a little about yourself and what you do so you can, you know, the audience gets a little feel about you. Thank you so much, Stacey, for having me on your podcast today. Okay, so I am a leadership consultant. I coach a lot of executives, business owners, leaders of nonprofits on the area of strategic leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, I started my career as an engineer. <laughs> I mm -hmm. trained as a civil engineer, which is an interesting story on its own because my granddad was a builder. Okay? Oh. My dad owned a construction company. Oh, wow. And I just figured that if I was an engineer, I would just fit into my dad's company. I would not have to go anywhere to look for a job. <laughs> <laughs> the tough part is that by the time we were done, I was done. By the time I got out of college, his business was down. So um, I had to look for a job. And it mm -hmm. took me almost two years to get an engineering job. Anyway, fast forward, uh, I was also very active in church. Mm -hmm. So I was made the youth pastor of my church nice. and just found out that I was talented for teaching and for pastoring people. And my influence grew rapidly in church. Mm -hmm. So I was offered a position in church. So I left the construction site, <laughs> went mm -hmm. to church. So on one hand, I'm a pastor too. Uh, with my wife, we founded a church in Lagos, Nigeria. That oh, has nice. About 40,000 members. Um, wow. The major focus is just growing the individual, growing their potentials, and growing their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, also, I 28 years ago, I went on radio and began to teach people basic principles for success. And right. this, right, this was born out of my experience. Like I said, I got out of college, couldn't get a job, and the future looked bleak. I was scared. I was, yeah. asking, you know, I was asking myself, is there any system that can guarantee that if you follow it, you would achieve success? And I began mm -hmm. reading books, and eventually I found out, yeah, our world is governed by principles, and yes. if you if you align with them, they work for you. They aid you to achieve your goals. Right. So when I went on radio, it was those principles I began to teach. Now, remember, this was Africa. 28 mm -hmm. years ago, I had no idea how many people needed those thoughts, those principles that I was teaching. Yes. And the majority of the population, my program on radio was just 15 minutes and I ran it once a week. Yet mm -hmm. it became really, really famous within a short time. So wow. I teach people how to succeed. And then after some time, I realized that at the highest level of success, you help other people to succeed. Yes. Helping other people to succeed, that's the basic thing you need to be a leader. Yes. Mm -hmm. I then saw this huge gap, huge gap first in Africa, and then all over the world, when it comes to leadership, who really teaches us how to lead? 
Mm-hmm. So I then went for my uh, uh, my graduate studies in leadership. So I did my master's in leadership. I did my doctoral program in strategic leadership. So these days, not only do I teach everybody how to lead, I also then work with leaders because I realize their work is so difficult and I yeah. want to, to advise and coach on how best to succeed on the job. Oh, wow. That is wonderful. That's very inspirational. Thank and I, I like that, you know, and today's society, just like we were talking about before, needs good leadership. We are lacking it right now in society and we really need to make life, you know, things are changing rapidly. Our world is changing rapidly. And a lot of things, sometimes I don't think we're we're going in a good direction when I see some, the way some things are done and the way some things are said and some of the principles in people's minds, you know, and a lot of the hatred that's going on too. There's just a whole bunch of different things that, you know, I didn't really see like 10, 15 years ago. In your eyes, what makes a good leader? What is a good leader in your eyes? Thank you. There are just, there are some basic qualities that make a leader. The first one is character, Mm -hmm. right? Because leadership is relationship with people. It's influence yes. people. And to influence people, they've got to be able to trust you. Yes. They're going to trust you. You need to be a honest person, right? Yes. You need to be a person who keeps your promises. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you to be a, a person, right, whose yes is yes and your no is no. you got right. to be someone who's disciplined, right? Because leadership actually starts with self-leadership. Yes. <laughs> Someone said leadership is taking people from point A to point B. Now, how do you take me from point A to point B if you are not making the journey (laughs) yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or if you've not been to point B. So the leadership relationship is built on trust. Mm -hmm. And that trust is possible when your character is consistent. Yes. The other part to it is competence. Mm-hmm. A leader has actually got to be skillful. Yes. Skillful in some technical area, but more importantly, skillful in getting the best out of people. Yes. We've got to have sophistication in people's skills. The third part I will add to it that will make it three C's is capacity. Yeah. So Usually we start at a small level, at a low level, right? Let's say Mm -hmm. in an organization, you're rising at first, you do your work alone. And then after some time, they make you a supervisor. And Mm -hmm. then you're overseeing five people. Yeah. They make you a manager and you're overseeing 20 people or 30 or 50. And then maybe you become an executive, you're overseeing a hundred or a thousand. Now that's capacity. So for the the capacity needs to continually increase. So character, competence, and capacity. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Now, you know, a lot of people have the characters, but they they feel scared to come out, you know, because maybe they've been working one-on-one and, you know, but they have those leadership qualities. They have good intentions and they have what it takes to lead people in the right direction. What do you say to those people who deep down inside, they would love to be a leader, but they're either scared or they just don't know what the next step is. How do you get that person from point A to point B? Oh, thank you so much, Stacey. I love that question, right? Because (laughs) I was there. (laughs) I was was, when I when I was a teenager in my early teens, if I was in a group and you asked someone to volunteer to lead the group, I would be the last person to volunteer. (laughs) Because I am introverted. Mm -hmm. I used to be extremely shy, right? And my mm-hmm. assumption was that the people who are extroverted, who are who make friends easily, who express themselves easily, I felt, oh, they, they are the leaders. They're the ones born to lead. Mm-hmm. Everything changed for me when I read the book. You know, it wow. was given to me by an older person in our church. He said, there's something about you. I need you to read this book. 
It was the first book ever I would read on leadership. And the author said, yes, philosophers used to say, few people are born to lead, everybody else is born to follow. He said, but those ideas are dead. He said, everyone has the potential to lead. He listed the qualities of a leader and said, whoever you are, you will see you have some of them already. The yes. ones you don't have, you can cultivate. Right. Honestly, he was speaking to me. I had <laughs> qualities. I, I could not argue against the fact I had right. qualities. So what I then did was to focus on cultivating the qualities I did not have. And they were the ones that were more around uh, communicating with other people, you know, building relationships, being friendly. Yeah. I remember that I bought the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. What comes naturally to the extrovert, I had to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I had to learn. For example, you, you know, as an introvert and a deep thinker, I don't, I don't like to, to, to do small talk. You know, mm -hmm. when, when, when I communicate, I tend to want to discuss serious issues, deep issues. And honestly, you can't run every relationship like that. <laughs> right? No, you can't. You can't. Right. So in Dale Carnegie's book, I actually read how to start a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. With a stranger. There are things people love to talk about every day. They like to talk about uh, the weather. They like to talk about the economy. They like to talk about politics. You know, I learned to ask people questions about themselves, like you asked mm -hmm. me, right? And right. people like to talk about themselves. And if and one good quality I also developed was listening. That mm -hmm. if I listened well enough to the person speaking, not preparing to answer, but actually listening. <laughs> yeah. I would have what to ask them next that will take the right. conversation further. You know, so, so I'm just saying to the person who is feeling like, oh, no, I'm not a leader. Oh, no, I don't have the qualities of a leader. You do already. Honestly, yeah. you have leadership potential already. And uh, the major thing is, one, take the focus away from yourself. Mm -hmm. and put it on other people mm -hmm. you are underestimating how much power you have you're underestimating the value of your story right how much help you could give to other people mm -hmm. you focus on other people's needs and just be out to serve yes right just be out to help mm -hmm. things will, will take their natural course from there once I began to just offer myself, not because I want to be seen, I don't want to be seen. I don't want, I don't even want to be famous, mm -hmm. but, but I want to help. I want to right. advise. So I then found out that as an introvert, as a thinker, those powerful thoughts I'm cooking up in my brain yeah. are actually valuable to other people. Right. Right. And once I'm able to bring them out and use them to serve other people, then I also, I find fulfillment because I'm amazed that what is normal or simple to me is making such great impact on other people. That's what right. I'm talking about, right? So I would say the essence of leadership is service. It's not being famous or anything. It's just service. So you, you just find ways, you know, to be of help to other people. Right to volunteer and things will take their natural cost from them. Now, I think a lot of people sometimes are afraid of failure and they're afraid that if they try, it's not going to work out. But, you know, if you read many books on, on people who have succeeded and become great leaders, they talk about their failures and, and the mistakes they've made. They've learned from it and they've strengthened and they've actually gained experience from it, which made them a better person. Now, what's your intake about making mistakes or maybe failing at a goal that you, you tried very hard, but you didn't actually get to that point. And I, honestly, I don't like to use the word failure because I feel like if we try, 
it's not failure. It, you know, we, we've made an effort. We didn't get to the point where we wanted to get, but we tried. And so we didn't actually fail, but in a lot of people's eyes, they, they use that term failure. You know, they had a goal, they tried, they didn't succeed and they think it's over. I can't do it. What's your intake on that? Oh, Stacey, that's such a beautiful question. And this is going to be helpful to a lot of people. First, I found a problem for people that are introverted. We're also perfectionists. Mm -hmm. So we expect things to work out perfectly the first time. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say to someone, it's time to wake up. This world does not work like that. Yes. Most of the time. Things never work out right the first time, most of the time. Right. Now, failure, you know, like you said, with time I got to discover that it's this world is about how you see, how you interpret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we were in high school, they took us into the laboratory Right. And what it was we were doing, they said they, they said they were experiments. <laughs> the fact that they were called experiments meant that they could turn out right or not, right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our, our minds were open because they were experiments. So why is it that we then grow up and we lose that capacity for experimenting and we expect mm -hmm. things to work out perfectly the first time? They don't. Right. Practically everything that man has invented that has value worked out after many trials. Yes. So if we take experimenting that doesn't work out, if we say it's failure, then we should conclude that failure is normal on the path to success. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what we should then try to do is not to avoid failure. It should be to fail faster. Mm -hmm. Right. We've got to make failure our learning experience. Right. Mm -hmm. That really is what it is. Failure is discovering how it doesn't work. Right. That's why persistence is one of the major principles for success. Mm -hmm. Persistence. Just get ready to try again and again and again. Look at the drugs that they give to us at the pharmacy, right? They get them right after many trials, they call them. So yeah. I just wanted to say to someone um, that you feel it's so perfectly normal, makes you a normal human being. Yeah. Uh, I say that successful people are the failures who refused to quit <laughs> after mm -hmm. And failures are successful people who quit too soon before they got to the success, you know, to the achievement of success. Finally, there's a difference between failure as a person and failure as an event. Mm -hmm. That's important. Right. Okay, so that what you're doing failed does not automatically make you a failure. Right, right. You are a successful person who is experimenting, trying different things. So some things are going to fail until eventually you get it right. Exactly. So don't internalize your failure. Mm -hmm. Don't build a monument on your failure and allow yourself to believe that something is wrong with you. Yes. Just because something didn't work out right. Oh, no. You are perfectly normal when things don't work out right. Exactly. You don't have a problem when things don't work out right. You the real problem starts when you refuse to try again. Exactly. I've noticed a lot of people have thin skin, and when things don't go perfectly right, or they haven't reached that that level that they've tried so hard to reach, they their self esteem gets beat up. And what do you do when, when your self-esteem, you're starting to self-doubt yourself, you start, your self-esteem is starting to like decrease. How do you get that person's confidence level up to make them realize that they are the person, like you mentioned, that has those quality, has those characteristics, that they can be that leader and they can achieve success? Thank you, Stacey. Um, 
Stephen, Stephen Harkovy said something in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that we have emotional bank accounts with one another. And mm -hmm. when, when we show love or show acts of kindness, we're making deposits in the bank account. Uh, when we hurt one another, we're making withdrawals. Right. Now, it does seem like we actually have emotional bank accounts with ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> right? And when we fail, I think that's a massive withdrawal on that bank account, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what should we do? Find ways to make deposits in there. Right. And I'll tell you one major point, one major way deposits are made when someone loves you unconditionally. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. it's a self-esteem booster. Yeah. So when things are going difficult, please move close to your support group. Right. That's when to move okay. close to the people, the people that loved you even before you attempted to succeed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> true. Right? The people that love you for who you are. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that love will feed you, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. feed you up. And then I would say it's also a time to leverage your memory. Yeah. Some people only rehash the negative part of their memory, and that's no good. Right. We, we need to recall the positive part. Mm -hmm. There are things you did before now, and you did well. Right. You you achieved a lot of successes. Maybe it's time for you to, to take your photo album <laughs> or to take your phone and to look back, look back at your graduation pictures, look back <laughs> at the things you did before, right? The things yeah. you accomplished before and, and encourage yourself so that this one situation does not now define you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because we draw our esteem from being loved we draw, we draw it from being accepted and we mm -hmm. draw it from having a sense of competence. You know, yes. the that yes, we can do it. And mm -hmm. having scenarios of failure can just make heavy withdrawals on all those. And right. I, I just encourage, it. that's why it's important to have a good friends, uh, posi positive people, positive people yeah in our circle it matters a lot because enthusiasm and positivity they are contagious yes oh definitely I was going to mention that too and you just mentioned it I uh, you know I was going to ask you how you feel about positivity because when you have positive energy around you I feel that strengthens you and it makes you focus on what can happen and not what won't happen because I think sometimes we say I could instead of I will or I might and you, you I you know you, you, those words you know kind of damper your your mental capacity I think it's a lot has to do with retraining the brain how do you feel about retraining the brain is there a certain way when you want to be a leader that you should retrain your brain to think a certain way absolutely Absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the qualities of a leader is vision. Mm -hmm. it's, if, it's so important. Some people say when you take vision from a leader, there's nothing left, <laughs> that it's the heart of a leader. Right. I define Vision is about seeing, right? Yes. So I, I define vision as the ability to see people, places, and things, not just the way they are, or the way they could be. Right. Now that means actively using the imagination. Yes. To go beyond the reality, the present reality. Right. To be able to manipulate the picture. Right. Right. Because in my imagination, I, I can go from negative to positive. I can go from lack to abundance. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can go from not having a car to having 10 if I want. <laughs> Right, right. Mm -hmm. From not having to have money, so it's that focus. Yes, it does seem like it's part of normal human nature to be negative. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like we're trained to do it. Yeah, I use the illustration of the glass cup, right? And they mm -hmm. say 
how do you describe it? Is it half full or is it half empty? Mm -hmm. uh, most people see the glass as half empty, which means they focus on the emptiness in life. They focus on what they don't have. They focus on what they can do. They focus yeah. on what they don't know. But when you focus on the part that is full, I found out it's a different set of emotions that you have. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I, if you focus on the emptiness, you have anxiety. You have, yes. fears, you have doubts. But if you focus on the fullness, you have peace, right? Yes. You have faith. Mm -hmm. And it fuels your creativity. And that's where positivity is so important. That right. you focus on what you don't have, you focus on what you have. Yes. And then right. with time, you get innovative or creative ideas on how to move, you know, with what you have, how to multiply it, you know, and so yeah. on. So that's why it's so important to be positive. I, I believe that being negative practically kills our creativity. Oh, um, definitely. Right? Yes. Kills, in fact, after some time, it affects our sense of identity. Mm -hmm. It moves from, I don't have this, I don't have this, to I am poor. You know? Right. And those mm -hmm. are different levels. Like I said about failure, that there's a difference between failure as a person and failure as an event. Right. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take long when we when we just keep seeing, focusing on the negative side of a situation, you know, the negative part of our lives. It doesn't take time before it defines us. Yes. And that's a big problem. So if we focus more on the positive side of life, it's empowering. Yes, very I'm, much so. And I should add this. I've come to believe that everything doesn't go down at the same time. No. Some, right? Sometimes we take only just one factor, mm -hmm. right? Yes. <laughs> like I write an exam and there are six courses. I failed one. Mm -hmm. And the normal thing is it's that one that I failed that just takes over my whole, you know, system. My, you yes. know, mm -hmm. my <laughs> But one of the one where I got an A, is that not talking about my area of talent? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's a whole lot better to be positive, but it takes retraining. Yeah. I found out that I used to be naturally just negative. I'll just take a thought. I would brood on it. And before you knew it, I, I, I would just find, find myself in sadness. You mm -hmm. know? Yes. So I, had to, I had to become conscious. <laughs> I had to develop allergy for negative thoughts, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> it started with the decision. I'm going to be a positive person. Right. I'm, I'm going to entertain only positive thoughts from now. So when I started the journey, I found out I would have been going negative in my thinking, maybe for a minute or two before I would remember, oh no, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Yes, and, yes. Right? And then I would stop. Mm -hmm. So I read, I read something in a book some 30 years ago or so about how to, how to kill negative thoughts. Yes. I said, okay, fine. I developed imagery, right? Mm -hmm. I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine myself holding a sword. Right. When a negative a thought comes into my mind, I'll cut off its neck. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, now I'm a murderer. I'm a murderer of evil thoughts. I don't kill people. I don't kill people. <laughs> negative thoughts. So I, I thought that actually actively doing that really helped me because with time, I didn't even have to wait two or three minutes, you know, in being negative. The moment a negative thought comes into my mind, now I'm sensitive to it and immediately I, I change to the positive. Right? right. I replace that thought with a positive one or I just speak out loud and, yes. and that changes, yeah, retrains my brain. So for leaders, I 
think that is very important. A leader cannot afford to be negative. Right. I've I've also seen, you know, great leaders get so immersed with greed that they they kind of ruin their image and ruin themselves, you know, and I, I don't even think they realized it because I think it became a, a natural part of their behavior and environment where they succeeded as a great leader, but then they started making money as a great leader and they focused more on the dollar bill than they did helping people. And you could clearly see it, the changes in them. And I feel like people have to really, you always look at why they they became a great leader in the first place and keep that in your head on a plaque on, in front of you and realize, because I think so many people have have ruined themselves and and you know and also brainwash other people through their their destructive behavior of greed. How do you feel about that? Stacy, these are profound thoughts. My observation has been that there are structures our world has built around success. Mm-hmm. The more successful you become, the bigger everything gets. Right? Yeah. You get the bigger salary, the bigger title, the bigger office. And then they tell you, oh, <laughs> you've got to get the bigger house, right? Yeah. Everything gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And right. when leader is not careful, you also get a big head. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Leaders have, we leaders have got to manage our ego. Yes. You know, it's that feeling of our importance. Mm-hmm. When it is not tempered with humility. Yeah. We begin to see ourselves as being more important than other people. Right. And so we want to get those things that make us feel important, make us feel rich, make us feel powerful. And like you said, we leaders have got to find a way to remind ourselves it's actually not about what we acquire. It's actually about what we give. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I do training in boardrooms, Mm -hmm. days for organizations i realize you know a lot of people in the boardroom sometimes i mean for big organizations are like in my age range and so on and i say to them okay i draw the i I draw maslow's hierarchy of needs Mm -hmm. at the lowest level the need for food and drink and so on next level safety and shelter from the third level, they are intangible needs. Mm-hmm. The need for love, then the need for respect. At the highest level, the need for self-actualization. So and mm-hmm. usually the people I'm talking to are wealthy people already. They're successful. So I say to, I, I applaud them for their drive, for their hard work. And I tell them, you achieved the first four levels already. You have you own houses, you have a lot of money and all that. You're loved. Then I tell them level five, self-actualization. So in spite of all those things that you have, there's something you are still looking for. Why are you still walking? Why are you still here? There's something you're looking for. There's there's a level of fulfillment you're looking for. And I tell them, sadly, what brought you here can't get you there. Right. yeah, by focusing on yourself, by setting goals for yourself, you know, with your self drive and so on, you've achieved everything for yourself. I said, but that self actualization, you can't get it without turning the focus and putting it on other people. Right. Mm-hmm. So Very we true. see there's a reason why the richest people in the world began to get together, talk to one another. And then just sign off this commitment to give like half of their wealth away. Right. They found out that after some, at some point, it just becomes numbers. Yeah. Your basic needs are met. Mm -hmm. So they found out if you really want to be happy, make other people happy. So other people. That's why you're taking on the world's big problems. 
that's what we need to tell leaders, okay? Look at those people on your team. Look at the people on the downline. Yes. Reproduce yourself. Right. <laughs> One of my mentors said to me, however fantastic you are as a player on the field, somewhere along the line, they're going to take you off that field because of age. <laughs> True. And if you're not careful, <laughs> The stadium or the stadiums where people paid to watch you play, you right? Will have, you will have to pay to get into those stadiums if you're not careful. Yes, he said. The way to bypass that problem is for you to become a coach. Yeah, mm -hmm. that way you'll still be getting into the stadium, <laughs> right? But your yes. role needs to change. You need to focus on other people. You need to yes. mentor them. You need to coach them. I say, I say to successful people, you are underestimating the value of your story. You overcame right. a lot of challenges to get here. Share your stories. Write a book, right? Right. Share your stories with young people. Inspire them. Guide them. Yes. And those are the things that keep our heads level. Yes. Very true. Very true. I love this. This is amazing advice that you're given. Now you came out with an amazing book. I want you to tell everybody about your book because it is truly amazing. Tell everybody what your book's title is, what it's about, because it's it's a truly amazing book. Thank you so much, Stacey. The, the book's title is interesting in the first place. <laughs> it's titled <laughs> Their Leader, the way you would start a letter. <laughs> right, right. right. Mm-hmm. Because I, I record videos on Instagram and I speak to executives and I always start by saying their leader. Mm. So this book is a personal message from me to every leader. And when we came through COVID, I realized the world changed. Yes. People have to, the human psyche changed. Yes. Some 7 million people dead. You know, at some point when the vaccines were not there yet, mm -hmm. all you wanted to do was just keep your life, right? Yeah. Just stay alive. You know, many of the things we thought were important, we just realized they were not that important. When yes, all of us have to stay at home, you know, and just yeah. stay at home. that's why after the the pandemic, as we came out of COVID, then we had the Great Resignation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were resigning their jobs. Why? People were reviewing their lives. Yes. What's really important to me right now? And then people were getting to realize the values of their leaders. Mm -hmm. They were getting to realize some leaders valued money more than they valued the employees. Yes. Some, they valued power. They valued success more than they valued the employees. So... I then felt leaders now need to actually, we need to review our game right now. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. we need more sophistication now. So that's why I wrote the book, uh, <clears throat> Dear Leader, Your Flagship Guide to Successful Leadership. And I address issues from, you know, reviewing your own values. As yeah. A leader, right. And leading from those values you know, to learning to coach other people. Uh, I tell my personal stories a lot. In the, in fact, my editors, when they, when they reviewed my stories, they said, let's put your stories in the chapter. So it's in chapter yeah. there. I talk about uh, cross-generational leadership. Mm -hmm. Right now you're having employees in a particular organization in three generations, you know, yeah. and we're finding misalignment in their communication because they don't understand one another and I'm, I'm giving advice you know on what to do and in one chapter also I advise on how you can create a personal leadership development plan for yeah. yourself I talk about how you can brand your organization for talent let people know when I'm a part of this organization I'm going to make progress with my life right yeah and then at the end of the book I put 10 different scenarios that in which leaders can find themselves. Right. 10, 10 problems that leaders can have and how they can lead their teams to resolve 
those problems. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's amazing. Now, where can people find this book? It's on Amazon. <clears throat> uh, their leader, your flagship guide to successful leadership is on Amazon. Uh, and if people want to know a bit more about me, they can visit my website, samadeyemi.com, S-A-M-A-D-E-Y-E-M-I.com. Mm. Oh, excellent. Now, before we go, if there's a couple of tips you'd like to give the listeners about leadership and success, what are some things you'd like to leave them with to, to help them become, become more successful and become a good leader and help them walk in the right direction so they can move forward and become a better person? Thank you, Stacey. Um, so the first thing is just the basic understanding. Everyone can lead everyone can lead and it's actually the average leadership quotient of mm -hmm. a team or a nation that determines how fast we travel honestly right. progress. this is important because sometimes we just want that leader who leader who's going to be the messiah who's going to have the magic wand and just change all of our lives and change everything and i said mm, i think it depends yeah. on all of us so everyone can lead Everyone can develop leadership skills. The world is in desperate need of very good leaders right now. And I just challenge everyone. It's time for us to lead. lead yes. Ah. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam, for coming on the show. This has been a, an amazing time. You've given us such valuable information. And this is a time where people need someone like you to help them really reevaluate themselves and for people who have not become become leaders that should this is a great way to get them out of their shell so they can move forward and really accomplish their dreams and accomplish be able to connect with their their characteristics and qualities that they have that they haven't utilized yet and for leaders it's really good to help them maybe reevaluate who they are and how good of a leader they have become, or maybe they need a little tweaks because we all tend to sometimes fall out of our, our, um, our little circle that we've created for ourselves. You know, it every it happens to everybody. We're all human. And sometimes it's good to take a little evaluation and honesty is key. I always say, and reevaluate yourself and then maybe make some changes to help yourself. So you could help others, just like you said. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Stacey, for having me on your podcast you are an amazing uh, conversationalist i should say <laughs> <laughs> thank you for yep. serving us with this podcast thank you uh, thank you it's been a wonderful it's been a pleasure having you on the show thank you so much and you have a great day you too